Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're gonna be talking about method overloading in Java. So hopefully we can get the concepts down so when we start typing it out, it makes a lot more sense. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So the whole concept of method overloading is that we can have the same method, but slightly different variations that have different parameters or a different number of parameters. So for example, let's say we had a method like this. So it's public void, doesn't return anything, and it has the name test, and it has one parameter, an integer x. Well, we could actually create a second version of this method that has a different parameter. In this situation, the parameter is of type string. Alternatively, we could create one that has multiple parameters. So for example, it could be int x, int y. And which method is invoked depends on how we invoke the method. So for example, we could say test, pass in a five, and that's going to call this version because it matches. A five is an integer, this one takes an integer, it's a perfect pair. This one on the other hand takes a string. So if we did this and passed in five in quotes, it's going to invoke this version. So although the body of the methods might be very similar, the different inputs allow for the method to be more general. It allows it to accept various inputs and still function. <laughs> still function, that's kind of funny because methods are functions. Anyways, one thing you should know is that the return type, that does not contribute to the method signature. And the method signature basically determines if the method is unique. These two methods have different signatures. But when it comes to overloading, having a different return type does not change the signature, at least enough. <laughs> so if we had int here and int x here, you can see these are the exact same parameters. They have the same name, just different return types. This would not work. This would not be a valid overload. So you're going to need to change it at the parameter level. If you need to do something like this, just change the name of this method and don't make it an overload. You could have test returns void and test returns int or whatever you want to do. So that's your introduction to overloading. In the next video, we're gonna get some hands-on work with that. So stay tuned and I'll see you then. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, yeah.